Join us as we discuss Mega Man X on the sixth episode of the Time Hop Podcast. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Time Hop Podcast. I'm your host, David Lozada. I'm joined with Lindsay Schubert. Hello, I'm currently playing the new Smash. <laughs> She's playing Smash and Tim Ronan. Hello. Right, Tim, are you playing Smash too? I'm not playing Smash. He's not playing I Smash. I have Smash, so I cannot play it. But eventually I'll it's probably get it. it. We'll all play it. Eventually. Sweeping the nation. Today's episode is on Mega Man X, celebrating its 25th anniversary this year. But first... Dang. Yeah. <laughs> really old, right? But first, I must ask, how was your Christmas, everybody? How were the holidays? Lindsay, how were, how were the holidays for you? Good. I, I played Smash pretty much all day. I played Smash plus uh, two other Switch games. Uh, one of them is called Timberman Versus, where you just chop all kinds of things for high score. Um, yeah, that is a fun game. And then I also unexpectedly purchased a puzzle box maker where you make a sprite-like uh, structures. So it'll be in the shape of all kinds of things. Just like uh, when people pull sprites out of bead, uh, like for video games or characters, whatever. Uh, and then you could also uh, like play different kinds of mini games on the sprites, the structures. And it's really cool. It only cost me 10 bucks. <laughs> Hmm. So that sounds interesting. Hmm. Tim, how was how were the holidays for you? They were good. Um, I picked up uh, Subnautica's. I think it's until today. Actually, it's free on the Epic Game Store. So I actually got that. Um, and actually, I think starting tomorrow or something, uh, Super Meat Boy. Forever is going to be free as well. Right, until the end so. of the year, right? I think, or something of that nature. Something like that, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Very but... limited time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Which is pretty cool, because, I mean, I've never played it. It's been out for, like, what, six years or something? <laughs> you know what? Me too, I've never played that game. So, yeah. Well, now we can. Yeah. I have several copies of it. <laughs> Out of pure circumstance. Well, there's a first for everything. And yeah. in, in the case of Lindsay, there's a second, third, fourth for everything, too. <laughs> a good game. I'm looking forward to it. As for me, my holidays, I had a little get-together with friends and didn't play a lot of games. But that's okay, because I, I had a good time anyway. Moving on to the news that stuck out to us this week. Before we go back to the past, let's take a look at the present. Lindsay, what stuck out to you this past week? What was your news story? Okay, so we all know that I love speed running and all that. So I went on Twitch.tv uh, shortly ago. <laughs> um and saw that a Japanese speedrunning marathon is on right now called RTA in Japan, which also stands for Real Time Attack. And they're playing a bunch of games that I don't know what they are because they have it written up there in Japanese. So it's gonna be a great surprise for me <laughs> as to what they're playing. <laughs> Um, you guys should check it out. I 
Do I'm not sure how long it's going on. Um, normally the marathons run from a specific day to another specific day. So it might go on until uh, Saturday because normally it'll be like the beginning of the week to the end of the week. Not sure, but uh, you guys should check it out. Or watch a recording. If this podcast episode is out a little later, just watch a recording of it. Here's a question I have. What's the difference between American speedruns and Japanese speedruns? <laughs> Not really much. I mean... Just the Japanese games they play? Are in Japanese. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Maybe... I don't know. <laughs> That's I, really it. I, I don't know. I, maybe uh, I had I, some kind of vague idea that they would play it in a different way or they they um, have like machines or something like some some tool assisted programs i don't know if that were allowed right. uh, well the uh, the only notable difference is we'll say consoles but even then in america we still if it's faster if, if it's faster for the game we're still going to use the japanese uh console and game Gotcha. Uh, if it's the same speed, we'll use the American version. So games like Luigi's Mansion, Super Mario 64, those are faster on Japanese, uh, Japanese cartridges, discs, and such, uh, because the, the characters, uh, you know, they take up less than what we would with our american alphabet so oh. or english alphabet <laughs> better yet that's a good point yeah the kanji yeah hmm. yeah that's interesting uh tim what was your news story this week i may have to cheat a little bit um, Go ahead. <laughs> cheat away it's it's the holidays nobody's judging you oh <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah news is like kind of slowish yeah exactly yeah you know it's obviously holidays and stuff but um i have something that i was actually thinking of mentioning last time but i didn't i went with something else but um so i assume you guys know what minecraft is Hmm. no i I don't know you probably haven't that's curious (laughs) well anyway um so there's a popular server on there um, called uh, Hypixel Games, and it's run by this guy named Hypixel. And apparently, he is now he has a game studio with like a bunch of people on it or something. Mm-hmm. And they're making this game called Hytail, which oh. is sort of like a Minecraft esque kind of thing, I guess. Um, except I, from what I gather, I think it's going to be more focused on like adventuring and doing stuff and like fighting bosses and other stuff like that. Um, you and know, also I think it's going to have some way to like make your own content or something to do with mods and stuff. Um, so it just, there's not a whole lot of information on it. Cause it like was just announced like I think a week and a half ago or something, but looks interesting. And I'm definitely gonna try that out. So, you know what? I actually know exactly what you're talking about because I saw a trailer for it uh, about a week or so ago, and it has like a crazy amount of views. It has like seven million views or something, which is insane. Oh, I, does it? Dang, a lot of views. Yeah, and like. I was not expecting it to have that many. Like, you know, it's basically like a a, a Minecraft. Whoa. It's 19 million VGs. Holy! Did you see? I saw Dang. it. Then I saw it pretty early on. Yeah, 19 million <laughs> views, and like I was not expecting it to have that many views because you know I was expecting it to get me a couple thousand. You know, because it's a Minecraft kind of esque game, right? But no, people are really excited for this. The Minecraft community must be, like, losing their minds over this. And, like, um, 
yeah, like you said, there there looks like there's a lot of customization tools, multiplayer options. The thing that I kind of stuck out to me was like this um, shared video viewing room or something, which is you know I I was like okay that's it sounds it sounds like something that would that would have died out <laughs> like last generation of consoles, but it's still here. So I I'm wondering if they're doing anything different with that. Um, yeah, really interesting, uh, market, I guess, because I didn't know that there was still a market for this. I guess I'm completely out of it, but I'm so surprised that it's, that it's, like, as popular as it is. And I'm surprised that, you know, major gaming outlets are not covering it, because it's, it looks like, like it's, like, people are really excited for it. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, I didn't know I had that many views on it. Yeah. I mean I'm I mean yeah, I'm definitely excited for it. I'll probably try and see if I can cover that as it comes out. Mm. What what are you what makes you so excited by it f- for it just out of curiosity because I'm not in that low like I'm not I'm not in that community so I I wouldn't know. Mm-hmm. I mean it's it's coming from someone who has a lot of background with this type of thing. Right. Um in that kind of creative space. Um, but I think what I'm pretty excited to see is how they allow you to like make and add your own stuff. Cause I'm really into that. Um, hmm. Yeah. There's just a lot of pedigree behind iPixel and the stuff he's done in the past. So hmm. it's, I mean, at, it, at the very least it has like a lot of potential. So I'm interested to see how that goes. Me too. Like There's a pretty good chance it'll be pretty good. Yeah, I'm excited for it too. I mean, like, I, again, I'm not part of that space, but, like, it looks, like, from what I saw from the trailer, it looked really cinematic. Like, it looked really high quality, and it, it looked like it was incorporating a lot of creative aspects into it. So, yeah, I'm really looking to forward to see how it kind of changes the Minecraft community, how it, like, for divides it, I suppose, because they're, they're, you know, it's not the first game that's based off of Minecraft. It's not the first game that's, you know, using its its uh, property, right? So, really, really interested to see to see this distor- this story kind of develop and this game kind of um, come to fruition. It's very interesting. <laughs> Moving on to the topic of the show. As I mentioned earlier, today's game is all about... Today's topic is all about Mega Man X. It's celebrating its 25th anniversary. Originally released in Japan on December 17th, 1993 for the SNES. In case you don't know, that stands for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, So it takes place a century after the original Mega Man games. It has it, it the way that its premise kind of works is, uh, its its world is kind of inhabited by humans and these things called Reploids, which are basically humanoid uh, robots that also have like all the emotions and characteristics of humans, but um, they're they're their own kind of uh, species, artificial species, so to speak. Um, their the main character is called Mega Man X or just X. And his partner, his name is Zero, and they have to stop one Riploid called Sigma, who just kind of like wants to destroy humanity, and he's in charge of um, this group of kind of uh, d- detractor uh, Riploids called the Mavericks. Uh, and and going off of that, they're very similar to the original Mega Man games. Um, there are eight stages, so there are eight kind of uh, Mavericks that you have to defeat. And each one grants you like a special costume and certain weapons, just like in the other games. Um, but the differences in Mega Man X are uh, like the dashing. Uh, I think that changes kind of like the way that level design um, was was orchestrated. Uh, the scaling, uh, in terms of uh, you could now scale walls, which is pretty cool and makes for more fluid kind of movement. 
and uh, the armor attachments too, because depending on what armor attachments you have, you can defeat certain enemies uh, more easily, uh, and and you, they grant you certain weapons, as I mentioned before, that make your life a little uh, less difficult. Uh, going into it, Kiji Ifune, who is the creator of Mega Man, uh, he wanted to make the series kind of more mature for the SNES generation because he knew those kids were kind of growing up. Um, but he also wanted to kind of expand the gameplay mechanics and make it it make it its own thing. And in fact, today we actually have you know Mega Man series continue and then the Mega Man X series continue. Less so for the Mega Man X series, though it did get some love. Um, Capcom did release the Mega Man Legacy Collection, I believe, earlier this year. Um, so it, it, you know, Capcom still acknowledges its, its existence, but I think Mega Man is the one, the original Mega Man is the one that, um, Capcom continually kind of goes into and, and, uh, makes more games for, and that's kind of like the one that's more popular according to them, uh, and according to their profits. Uh, so let's dive into it. What do you guys think of the presentation of Mega Man X? Uh, how does it? kind of how does how do the graphics hold up today uh lindsay what do you think the game visually it's beautiful um i think it has a great aesthetic uh, mega man on his own i like how he looks probably uh there more than the original mega man series uh i don't know what it is about it but he he looks better yeah, I, I mean, like the environment and the the bosses, any of the other AI. Every, everything is pretty great looking in the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could definitely tell that um, like Inafune wanted to make it like a more mature kind of take on Mega Man because the main character X... Uh, like he he looks much more he I mean he just looks more mature right like he looks like yeah. a like a like an adult right um and I, I don't know like the way that like his face too looks more pronounced and uh, even even though it's everything's still pixelated and everything um I feel like I do feel that sense of yeah this is much more of a mature kind of take on the series Tim what do you think what was what were your impressions of the presentation I pretty much agree. It's a big leap up from the original Mega Man's that you saw. Mm -hmm. um, there's cool um, designs of the characters and things you fight and backdrops and stuff. I, yeah, not much else to say about that. Yeah, the it's funny that you brought that up, the, the backdrops, because I feel like some of them are really kind of immersive almost because like uh there was one boss battle which is in the desert you know i i, I think it was like um armadillo creature or some of some sort and the background kind of looked like it was um you could you could see into it it was it didn't look 2d which was really cool uh there are other things like i feel like it like the way that they made the landscapes all kind of seems like seamlessly kind of flows into this whole dashing mechanic like this this fluidity and i know um we're going to touch on this next the gameplay but uh you know like that's such an integral part to mega man and and i like even watching speed runs of it makes it for so much so entertaining because the colors just the colors just kind of like flow on screen and it makes you it's really vibrant and it makes you like really kind of immersed in this this world even though it's still really kind of out there and it, it's very cartoony like the bosses are very cartoony um with the exception of sigma uh who's kind of like the most i don't know mature and adult like kind of character the other ones are kind of like they're really uh you know like creatures from wherever just like the like traditional Mega Man games so I, not not very different in that regard but um in terms of you know like like the the landscapes and some of the little area some of the little enemies like around the levels are a little more intricate too um and the levels themselves they can i don't i don't know if you guys noticed but they're actually destructible in some sections which is really cool 
um and I, I i appreciated that because you would be you know like you know if you're too slow then you just fall through the through the cracks in the in the level and you know you lose life so um again it comes it ties back to the gameplay uh so what did you guys think of the gameplay uh lindsay what did you think of of that aspect i think you might have mentioned it even for the visuals but gameplay is smooth too uh goes with the visuals like they they work hand in hand for like uh mega man's movement or x um x-man it, it makes you <laughs> like it makes it i guess it's smoother it makes it work better uh yeah. Probably a little smoother than the original series. Um, yeah, I know and... you saw a speed run of it. A speed run yeah. of it, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I mean, can you speak to that? Like, how does it? How does it kind of take advantage? How did the speed run take advantage of the game's fluidity? So the speed run, of course, uh, makes things work really really fast you know, in the game uh and it's just you'll keep moving forward and then you shoot every once in a while you like shoot and jump and then you go forward again shoot and jump it's pretty systematic um and then the bosses are pretty much the same way they they each have their own simple it's pretty simple pattern if you know a speed run um and then also with jumping on walls that's a very that's something that you have to really get used to in the speed run you're gonna have to do that a lot more than in regular uh playthrough mm -hmm. i mean it, it yeah like with any speed speed run it it really boils down to like knowing where to jump where to do the dashing, where to do the um, the scaling, et cetera, et cetera, you know, like, and no, knowing enemy placement too, right? Uh, like yeah. any good speed run, but I felt like, and I and I saw one too in preparation for this podcast, for this episode, and it's really entertaining to watch. I mean, despite, you know, you knowing that this guy knows where everything is, um, you know, especially if you're unfamiliar with the title like I am, it's really entertaining kind of just to see uh you know the speedrunner just like move through the level seeing things explode like even when the boss battles like he would sometimes just kind of like spam attacks but like particularly like with the boomerang um there was one and there's one mm -hmm. boss that you know you have to use a boomerang to defeat and that just like that just looked fun you know i think it was the flying the hawk guy and like that just looked fun you know um yeah and it, you know I, when i see it it makes me go man this game seems kind of challenging actually because if you don't know these things like how else would you you know experiment and kind of figure out you know where the cracks and levels are like like i if i were to play in this game for the first time it would be really difficult for me honestly because i i just would not be very familiar with navigating that fast and like knowing where things are it's kind of it's kind of has to come to you almost naturally you know uh you have to get very used to it yeah, yeah. At, at least yeah it takes practice um because believe me yeah everybody's the same way when they first play a game and then when they're trying to speed run it uh you know it'll feel inadequate but mm -hmm. then over time you know you get used to it um and you're just you get to a point where you're competing with everybody on the leaderboards um and this game is also very popular in the speedrunning community uh mega man in general is very popular because you know the platformer which uh people do generally like going fast on platformers um hmm. seeing how quickly they could beat a level uh but i also discovered a really cool thing about the game and the speed run 
today. So there is an Easter egg in the end of the game that you could take advantage of where it's pretty much like a Hadouken <laughs> or it is a Hadouken in the game. It's a direct reference to Street Fighter uh, since this is on the SNES um, where you uh, take three deaths in the game and then you encounter the last boss and then you get the Hadouken where you could kill uh, several of those the bosses. Mavericks. Yeah. The yeah. Mavericks, yeah. 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 They're, they're all part of the last boss. You could kill them in one shot. <laughs> wow, that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. And I was like, wow. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I didn't know that you had to... Uh, that there was an Easter egg there where you could kill your character several times and then get a hot open. <laughs> so that, that's pretty cool. And that's another reason to watch or, you know, speedrun games yourself. You could manipulate things like that. And then people will watch you and be like, wow, <laughs> you know, mm. that's really cool. So I, I love trivia like that and all that stuff. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really, it is really cool. I agree. Tim, what do you think of Mega Man X's gameplay? I mean, I think it's pretty great um, because it takes like all the old stuff from back from the originals and kind of just iterates on it. Um, so like the fact that you can find abilities and they give you different things to do besides just the, the eight different attacks that you get from the bosses, that's pretty cool and already touched on that, but that has a lot of new mobility and the kind of things you can do. And again, yeah, that leads like the dash, you know, that leads to a lot of like speed running capabilities. And I think you can also like dash off of walls as well, like mm -hmm. while you're wall jumping. Yeah. yeah. And that's pretty cool. Cause you can just, you get, can get all this like momentum and get into the, like, if you're good enough, you can, yeah, you can do it like, really fast, which, just looks really cool and makes you feel awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. there's even like you do get those armor pieces, and you get there's like a teensy bit of character progression there. Yeah, no, it's it just kind of just adds onto the formula that people knew. And I actually thought this was one of those games that people didn't like, but I think maybe that's not the case. Right, I'm thinking of a different. A different Mega Man. Player. I think no, I think you're right, Tim. I, I think people did not like this series because at least hardcore Mega Man fans did not like this series because um like it, it diverged too much from the Mega Man formula, which was more like methodic, which was more like you have to carefully kind of like, you know, go through the level and, and, and stuff like that, whereas Mega Man X series is just like you just go fast, you know, like you just kind of you can just speed through it and and you know i mean it's still you know you have to be careful with enemy placements and level design like i said mentioned before there are hazards thrown in all the time and it's struck and they some of the environments are destructible but like i feel like um it, it, it was easier in that respect maybe Mega Man fans found it easier or or too divergent from like the core Mega Man series um but i don't I don't really get that impression at all, like, in terms of, um, because I've played Mega Man games before, like, I don't, they are, they are different games, and I think the gameplay is what kind of separates the two from one another, they are very different in that respect, but, like, they're both very entertaining, you know, in their own right, I, I don't, I don't think one is better than the other, it, if I'm going to be perfectly honest, I actually prefer, um, and would like to try, in more in depth the Mega Man X series because I, I prefer more kind of fast paced platforming as opposed to more um, rhythmic kind of methodic you know thought thoughtful platforming maybe maybe I'm just it speaks to who I am as a person and maybe I'm just too impatient but <laughs> but uh, it, yeah Mega Man X seems like it's it's much more for me so moving on to the sound design music of the game 
what did you guys think of that? Lindsay, what did you think of it? Or Tim, you know, what did you think of it? Yeah, um, I was listening to the OST for a little while, and I don't know, it just it didn't really stick with me for some reason. I feel like it, it's probably one of those things that a lot of people like, but I don't know. I, I actually was getting sidetracked and was listening to different video game music um, by accident, um, which I, I don't know if that speaks to how I felt about a uh, Mega Man X's. Mm. Um, I mean, what do you, what do you guys feel? Cause maybe different from mine. Yeah. Lindsay, I'm, I'm interested in hearing what you think about it. Cause I have similar opinions to Tim. Um, I mean, I, I would regularly listen to a, uh, an online radio station called, uh, RP. <laughs> Gamers.net, and they would play Mega Man X music pretty regularly. So, um, yeah, I enjoy listening to the soundtrack. Um, you know, like I said, I've been listening to it uh, just by happenstance on the radio station for several years. So, um, it, it sticks with me uh, because of it, even even though I haven't even played the game. Um, I mean, I, I I could definitely see that. Like you're you're listening to it frequently, it kind of resonates with you. So I could definitely mm -hmm. like you know acknowledge that. But as for me, and and I guess it's the same for you, Tim. Like, it's good music. It's definitely good. It's not terrible. Like. I, I can't really think of a terrible video game soundtrack right now, but like, it's not terrible music. It's just forgettable, I guess is the best term to use. Like, like I enjoy like some of the sound, like the sounds of the variation. Definitely, I enjoy the variation. Like in the in the ice level, it was really like nice. Um, kind of like it, 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 it the atmosphere really uh, fit in there and the music kind of tie that all together and the same thing for the desert which is much more like um like a romp kind of like uh like uh i i think in the desert you start off like on a in a in a in a platform like a speeding platform so it's much more like uh hyper it's much more it's much faster paced so i think that went well with the gameplay even um in, in that particular level uh but again it's like nothing about it is like extremely for me nothing about it is extremely kind of noteworthy nothing about it is like something that makes me go okay i'm gonna go back and listen to this this soundtrack on youtube you know not like it's not like doom it's not like even sonic adventure um or some of the other games that we've played it, it's kind of more like left for dead which is kind of like okay like it's good you know it, it's it's good music um but it's not something that is uh, a defining kind of aspect of the game for me uh, again the the defining aspect of the game is is the gameplay uh for me but but that that's kind of like my major takeaway from it yeah for me i have to disagree the soundtrack i feel like it is re really notable memorable um there's just in like mega man games for me in general like mm -hmm. you hear a Mega Man soundtrack and then you're like oh it's Mega Man whatever you know yeah that, yeah yeah that's a major part of the game for that that's why I think uh and like for most platformers actually like most popular platformers you're like ah yes uh this is the soundtrack from this game uh because right. you know you're listening to that um you know countless times when you're trying a level over and over again so it makes it more memorable for the game so right yeah i mean you know it could also be that i'm used to i'm very spoiled and i'm used to all these orchestras and stuff like that maybe the same applies to tim i don't know <laughs> you know <laughs> i'm not used to all these um these like chiptune soundtracks so it could be that i'm spoiled but but yeah, I mean, different different tokes for different folks, right? Uh, I, I am a like 
chiptune fan so oh uh, there you it go it probably makes sense why i am more into it than you guys are <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah that, that makes total sense uh so what were your overall impressions of the game uh tim what were your overall impressions of Mega Man x well i i'm actually i'm trying to remember there was like this big collection of like the first um first eight Mega Man's that I played a while ago. It's mm-hmm. like the anniversary collection. Yeah, the, the legacy GameCube. legacy connection collection, I think. Oh or no, the like anniversary that. collection. So, yeah, 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 for the GameCube. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I've played through. I think I've played through at least most of them, if not all of the like previous Mega Man's. Um, and I got uh, Mega Man Nine on the Wii like ages ago. Um. So I would definitely consider playing a new Mega Man game. Um, and again, just with the new things they've added, it seems like it could be just an interesting twist on something I already know. So mm-hmm. it seems like a good time to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lindsay, what are your overall impressions of the game? From the speedrun, uh, I love the game. Uh, might even speed run it myself in the future whenever I get the chance to play it. Um, What's your handle? Plug in your handle. <laughs> Infam Red Yoshi. <laughs> go, go on Twitch. Follow her. <laughs> well, on Twitch is Infamous Red Yoshi. Infamous Red Yoshi. That's because uh, Twitter has to be shorter. God damn it, Twitter. Get your it shit together. It has to be shorter by like four letters. So, yeah, that would be a future thing. Um, I don't know how far close in the future, but um, yeah. But it's on your radar. Uh, <laughs> mm. it, it's, it's a great looking game, and I can understand why there are people who love the game. Um, I mean, I think it's unfortunate that people are against the game and then there is another there's another series or uh Mega Man X game that really outraged people um it was a little more recent that's what it was Mega Man Zero oh I know I know Mega Man Zero yeah that 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 really that really pissed off a lot of people because the redesign and all of that, yeah. That yeah, really and people. Mega Man's much. Uh, his sprite is bigger, so it just looks way different mm-hmm. <laughs> from uh, from an original Mega Man game. No, as far as what uh, my general impressions of it, I mean, I I think it's. Like I'm, I'm very similar to Tim in in the sense that I I've played other Mega Man games before, but this just you know unfortunately I didn't get a, the time to play this one. But like, just you know, spending time watching it on on, on YouTube and, and watching the speedruns and et cetera et cetera, that makes me really excited to kind of try something new in the Mega Man universe because it is, again I, I go back to what I said earlier, it is a different game. Like I. I it has the same name, like, it has very similar mechanics, but, like, to me, like, the gameplay just makes it so much more different and so much more of its own thing, you know? Like, the, the especially the dashing and the, 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 the pace of it. And, you know, watching the speedrun made me kind of inspired. I kind of want to go back to it and, and do my own kind of, not a speedrun, because I'm, I'm a really slow gamer, but, like, <laughs> slow in, in every sense of the word. But, um... Uh, I, it makes me want to like go through it and try my best to just like get through the game as fast as I can and and, and you know be very proficient in it. Um, yeah, it it seems really like a game I it's right up my alley and I'm surprised I haven't played it yet to be honest. But now that it's 25th anniversary. It's a perfect time, right? So uh, yeah, definitely gonna look into it going forward. Okay, so. That about wraps it up for our impressions for Mega Man X. Join us next week as we discuss Nidhogg. A bit more recent game. Came out about five years ago for PC. Uh, it's a very it's an indie title. 
Uh, so look forward to that. Okay, guys. So what do you guys? What are we all playing next week? Lindsay, what are you playing next week? I'm gonna stream. Not sure which day. In the next few days, I'm gonna stream on. Uh, First, planning to do more Tony Hawk's on the Ground two speed runs, but then I realized uh, the end of the year is coming up, and I made a promise to myself to do another Mario Party one speed run before the end of the year to try to get um, under seven hours. <laughs> so that's one thing. Wow, um, seven hours. How is it? Yes. How do you even do that? Like, how do you do that with just with the CPU? Uh, people have done it before. <laughs> I, I could have had it under seven hours, but I had messed up several times. I had to redo some uh, some boards because um, uh. you only have you you play the um was it eight boards. You play the eight boards. Each board takes about 40 minutes. So 40 minutes times eight, you have, you know, 320 minutes. <laughs> oh, my God. And I believe that's about seven hours, six hours, <laughs> about that. So um, there okay. are several things that you could do. Um, while well, setting up, that will shave off some time. Like if you uh, skip uh, computer mini games, skip explanations. Um, you make the text go fast. Uh, and you can uh, intentionally lose mini games if you feel like you don't need the coins. Or whatever. So, uh, yeah, there are several speedrun strats for a game like Mario Party. <laughs> wow. It's pretty funny. I didn't know it was that sophisticated, like, going into the... <laughs> wow. Okay. I wish you the best of luck with that one. Because that sounds very uh, detail-oriented and even mathematical in some senses. <laughs> yes. Um, I... I still have to, uh, I, I was testing some things for the game, which I haven't done, uh, for the past few months, like testing, uh, mini games, which one would be, which ones would be more optimal to win, which ones, uh, you could just lose right off the bat. Yeah. Um. Because wow. I, I do want to become more dedicated to a Mario Party speedrunning. <laughs> right now, there's only three other people who have speedrun this category. <laughs> hmm. So I, I'm I'm in fourth right now with over eight hours. Everybody else has under seven. So yeah, that's a big goal for me. <laughs> I wish you and your many Twitch viewers probably do the same. Best of luck. <laughs> Uh, and again, you could find her at infamous, infamous Red Yoshi on Twitch, right? Yes. So check that out. When are you? When are you streaming? It, it tends to be like Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, like one of those four days. Well, whatever day it is, uh, your anyone that's interested could follow you on Twitter. And I'm sure you'll announce it there, yes. right? I, I, I will post about it on Twitter. Plus, I will also post about it on Instagram. At Infran in in fan Red Yoshi, people. Go. Go, 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 go. Go right now. Go. <laughs> no, actually, listen to the rest of this podcast, then go. <laughs> Tim, what are you playing for the next week? Uh, you know, same old uh, <laughs> of Minecraft. But... I like I mentioned I might play some Subnautica because I just picked that up, and I will definitely be picking up Super Meat Boy as well from the Epic Game Store, so I might be playing that as well. 
Yeah, but, I I think that's what I'm going to be playing too, actually, the Super Meat Boy, uh, now that it's free, because that sounds super, <laughs> super interesting. No, um, super <laughs> something, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, no, something I haven't done before, and it's something I should super do. So uh, def that's what I'm that's what I'm gonna do this following week too. Boy, and, that sounds like a great idea. All right, well, that about wraps it up for this episode of the Time Hop Podcast. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, I'm your host again, Dave Lozada. You can find me at Xenocreator125 over on Twitter. You can find Lindsay at InfamRedYoshi over on Twitter. And Tim, writing articles in King Gamer as usual. Thanks again for joining us. Join us next week for Nate Hogg, uh, released five years ago. Uh, that yeah, should be very yeah. interesting. It's gonna be 2019. <laughs> it's gonna be 2019. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's kind of screwing screwing me up too, man. I'm a, <laughs> we're old. I'm not ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> me neither, girl. Me neither. Thanks again, everyone. Catch you next week. <laughs>